Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sell spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barn green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life. The next thing I'm going to work on is the hem and it's going to be a fairly narrow hem. So what I'm going to do is put the facing, you know, right sides together. So my seam allowance is poking out here and they want you to do it at five eighths. I'm actually going to do it at three quarters because my fabric is so thick. I think I'm going to need three quarters to make the, the hem that I need. So I'm going to just make a seam the entire width of the um, facing in here on both sides and then come back and take the bulk out of the corner and flip it right side out. Okay? Alright, so I've got these sewed. So what I'm going to do is trim it. Um, I want to keep my full length towards the end over here. But I'm going to gradually come up and then just take that bulk out of that corner. So it's pretty much like that. And flip it right side out. Let me take go get my chopstick. Hold on. So what I'm going to do, because I redid my my waist size, so I need to re-strategize my buttonhole placing, I'm going to go ahead and mark the point where the first buttonhole should be. And that is this little point right here. Okay? That's where the whole lapel starts opening. Now I know that I need, what is it, one, two, three buttonholes at the front, and I also want one right here. If I don't have a button here, um, actually I would, I would probably put the button right under, but I'm going to put a hook or something right here because that's that waistline and it's very sturdy because of all the stays and everything I put in, but I want to make sure that's real secure. So if this is my first one, I got one of these thingies and they're fun. They're not, you know, 100% accurate, but they can kind of give you an idea of where your placement placement can be. My no, my buttonholer does not like to go through super fat stuff. And I think that I like this kind of spacing right here. So what I'm going to do is draw little lines where I think it would be nice to put buttons. And that's about all it is. Nice to put buttons. And then I will come back, hang it up on my dress form, put pins where these places are and see how that lines up. Okay, so I have it pinned up and down and where my effective buttonholes are. And I like, now at this waistline, like I said, I'm going to be putting a hook or something invisibly on the inside just to keep that secure. But I like that placement. Okay, so I am getting ready to mark all of my buttonholes. Now, before I even got started, what I did is I ran a basting stitch about oh, somewhere between three quarters of an inch or so, you know, it's kind of wonky, in. And the reason I did that is because this is such a long stretch. I wanted to make sure that my fabric and my facing stayed in alignment as I'm putting my buttonholes in so that they don't, you know, have little bunches in between the buttonholes incorrectly. So for me, just running a quick row of basting stitches will really help that. Now, the next thing that I need to do is mark my buttonholes. So I'm going to use my pattern piece to get a guide of how far in it needs to be. 
This edge of the buttonhole, the start of the buttonhole, is exactly half an inch from dead center of this circle. Okay, and this circle is marking the edge of my fabric because all of this over here is seam allowance. All right, so with that, what I can do then is come back in here and half an inch in, I'm going to mark a line where I have um, little cross hatches here. Okay, so I'm going to do that all the way down so that I have little lines like this. And at that point where those lines, the cross hatch lines are, I can square them up with the edge of my fabric and draw my diagonal. Now for my buttonhole, I just need to know where this point is. Sorry, I just need to know where this point is and I just need to know where the track is. I don't need an ending point because it automatically lengthens for me. If yours does, put that on there too. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that all the way down and in the bodice and go over to my buttonholer and you saw it earlier so I don't need to show you. I'm just going to make all of these little buttonholes. All right, so I've got my buttonholes in. I am going to be removing my basting and it looks like there's a couple spots where I sewed my buttonhole quite securely over it, so I'll just snip that. I've got lots of threads to snip, but I want to show you what the buttonholes look like. So if I iron over it and all my marks disappear, no steam on my iron, so we can see. Alrighty, that's how my buttonholes are looking and um, you know I think that that is nice. It's going to do its job. Ooh, I almost stabbed myself. Okay, so I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and finish this up, press this whole side and sew some buttons on. Alright, so I am kind of wrapping around finishing mode here, finding a needle that I like. Do you ever have a favorite needle? I have hundreds of needles and there's like one that I like in my pin cushion and I keep so many different needles in there that I'm not really terribly fond of. I should just move them out, but it's like they're his friends and he needs friends. But anyway, okay, so I am finishing and it doesn't actually say, at least I didn't read it in the instructions, but what I'm going to do is take some time and just stitch invisibly from the front by hand the edge of this down. I'm going to catch stitch it. I think that that would be a good stitch because it allows a little bit of movement so that in case it gets tugged one way or another, it shouldn't be terribly obvious. Now to do a catch stitch, what I'm doing is I'm just going to get it started underneath my facing so I can bury the knot in there. And my needle is pointing backwards, yet I am stitching forwards. So I can take actually quite a decent sized stitch on this fabric because it is so thick and have it invisible. Now on the um, garment part, I'm just going to catch like a couple threads. Let me see if I can get it up close enough here without it focusing on my fingers. So if this is where I am here, I'm going to come up over here. You know, this distance uh, on what I'm doing now is maybe about a quarter to three eighths of an inch pick up a couple in, couple of little threads there. Oopsie. Pull it sideways and then bring it back down and catch some on my facing. And um, basically you're making little X's back and forth. Okay, if you can see where it goes down and up and down and up. I'm just going to be doing that all the way across. It's going to hold it nice and flat and um, because I don't want it to be able to undo itself. Okay, so now I am going to cut my uh, buttonholes open. So I have my facing you know, attached to both sides and I think that that's really going to help. It's just really going to help. It's going to make it so it doesn't want to flip in and out, you know. There's other ways you can do it. You could use something fusible or something like that. I just think that for me for this fabric, for the time that I have to make it, catch stitching it was the way. So anyhow, my buttonholes are half an inch wide and my chisel is half an inch wide. 
thereabouts. So all I have to do is just cut straight in. Once I've done that, I want to go in and get any loose threads that might drive me crazy later. Pull those guys out of there and trim them off. Just like that. All right, so this is the side with my buttonholes. And on the button side, I drew a line at 5 8 inch in because that's the line that my buttons need to line up on according to the pattern. So I know that's their placement there. And by just butting it up so that my ends match, but more importantly, so that this waistline here matches because that's the one that's going to be painfully obvious. So where this button is, I'm just going to draw a line straight across. Just like that. Because sometimes when you're sewing buttonholes, at least for me, they may get off by a little bit. And by doing it this way, I can make sure that there's a button directly aligned across from it. So this is up here in the bodice section. You can see I'm making sure that this seam here is lined up. That's the main one. So then I can just draw a line straight across this button, this button, and this button. And now I'm set. I'm going to get my little pink buttons and a needle and thread and sew all of those on. Put my dress on the dress form and just let her hang out overnight and we'll hem her up in the morning. Okay, so I am actually going to be doing the hem now and I'm going to do the hem slightly different than the instructions. The instructions want you to fold it and then fold it again, which is nice. But my problem is, wants to focus on that cord. Soon we will be done with the cord. Okay. The, my problem is that my fabric is so thick that if I make a hem like this, I'm afraid that it would not hang the way that I want it to. It would be a little more stiff. So I am going to go back to stretch lace. And stretch lace is nice on a uh, big flared hem because it's going to work to cinch it in on its own. Now, I probably should have done this, sewed on the lace before I made this little curve, but you know what? We can still make it work. What I will do is just let it hang out there for a little bit. Um, and as close as I can start with my sewing machine, which is probably going to be like right about here, that's where I'll start. And when I'm done with the whole thing, I'll just tuck all this in by hand. That won't be a big deal. But the way that it works is I'm using the uh, narrow stretch lace. Let's see here. This one, it's very narrow. What is this color? Mauve. 1983. Mauve was a big color in 1983, if I remember right. Okay, so I'm going to start, say I'll start sewing it here. As I sew it, I stretch it a little bit. It's a stretch lace. So as I stretch it and sew it, it's going to work a little bit of ease into it. Okay, just like that. So that way, when I go to turn it and press it and hem it, it's going to be perfect. The way that I sew it is there's these two channels on it that um, are like the stripes at the edge. I'll be sewing inside of those little channels in a straight stitch. Okay, so to get started with, I'm just going to pin this one right here. I just sew it straight on with a straight stitch right here. And I am putting it so that the edge of my fabric is inside. So when you can see it behind here, but it's going to be encased into the lace so it's not going to be, you know, really obvious. So let me go and sew this straight stitch all the way around the entire skirt. All right, everybody. I want you to take a really good look at this and tell me, what do you see? You do not see a wire because I am using my new microphone. So this is a good test to see if it's going to work. I'm very excited. Okay, so back to sewing a dress. Uh, let me get back to the beginning, which is here. Now, 
I have sewn on my stretch lace and you can see that when I sew it on it it did do what it's supposed to do. It's a little bit elastic so that when I go to press it it's going to form that curve, that arc perfectly for me. How I'm going to work the edges over here where I've already catch stitched it I'm just going to kind of press it for right now and leave that long piece Trying to move my, my iron so it doesn't steam up the camera. I'm just going to leave this long piece here, and when I'm all done, I will come back, trim it, flip it under, and just, you know, whip stitch it down, and that's going to be fine. The rest of this is just a matter of smoothing it down and pressing it because the stretch lace wants it to form into that arc, so it's really nice. Now... I was thinking about it and I am actually going to machine stitch this on. So I don't think it's going to show very much. It's going to be fine. It's a very full skirt. So when I'm done pressing it, I'm going to come back and in this top row right here, let's see if I can get you down there, along this very top row of the stretch lace, I'm just going to do another straight stitch. Um, in a coordinating thread so it ho hopefully won't be too obvious all the way around and I'll show you what that looks like. And I just wanted to show you really how easy it is to sew on the lace. It's, it's this easy. I'm not even pinning it. I'm just guiding it very carefully as I go. And on the right side I get a really nice smooth hem. And because it's wider, um, I think that it's going to fall and drape a lot better. So anyway, it's easy. I love using stretch lace on curved hems. All right, so we are so close to being done. The last thing I need to do is put a little hook and eye um, right here. And I'm just going to use a regular one, not necessarily one of those skirt ones, just a plain little hook and eye. Wow, can you even see that? So the hook is going to go on the top part, which is the buttonhole part. The eye is going to go down here, but I want to place it so that they don't show, okay? So if this is coming to hook this way, that means this needs to be down here in the hidden part. So just to make sure I have everything very inconspicuous, what I'm going to do is button these buttons and draw a line where the visual edge is, okay? So everything beyond this line is visible. So now I can unbutton this button and place my loop. So I want to place them in this area above my stitching line. I think that that's a good solid place for it. was another epic adventure. So my final thoughts. Um, it's a cute dress. Actually making out of this fabric, which is, you know, it's all linen. It's very substantial. It actually feels more like an early spring when there's a hint of chill in the air type dress than a July afternoon on the porch where it's a little warm. But I think it's a cute dress. Um, Fit is good, you know. I wouldn't say, oh, outstanding. And the only reason I wouldn't is because, um, you know, you still have the typical 
range of motion issues that you have in an outfit like this. Um, but that's just the style. It's not necessarily the fit. You know, it's not meant to be a going to the gym outfit and it's meant to be a lovely day outfit. So that's fine. Um, lots of steps. I think probably the most challenging part aside from pattern making, that's its own monster. But for actual construction of the dress, I would say would be doing all the particular stuff to make sure that the collar and lapels line up exactly. Um, the instructions are clear. The markings on the patterns are good. But I think that you need to be extremely accurate and observant of your placement. I think if you can do that, you can get it. Um, other than that, it's a cute dress. I like that it fits. I did not make the sash. I will, but I did not want to wear the sash because the sash that comes with the dress is fairly wide and I didn't want that to cover up how it fits. Um, I thought that it might kind of camouflage and we wouldn't be able to see if I'm actually getting the fit that I was promised for doing all of that work. So, you know, there is a sash to it. You can make your sash. I, I enjoyed the thought that this is a classic dress. Actually, while I'm going through my patterns, I, I found that old simplicity pattern, exact same dress, you know, slight variation on, on skirt, okay, but everything else exactly the same. And it carries over the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. I don't know about the 70s or 80s, you know, that, that got a little sketchy. But in the 80s, there was probably something very similar to this, but with a different type of skirt, you know. Um, and so I like that. I like that it's a classic. And now I have a pattern of a classic dress that I can make up and wear. Oh, and one other thing I was thinking as I was like putting it on and everything, this could make a really cool coat pattern. Um, if I was to make it into a coat, I would make the sleeves wider. I would give myself a little bit more room here, but with the big full skirt and, you know, since it's completely buttoned up, you know, changing a few things like that, it could make a really cool coat pattern. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind. So anyhow, I hope you liked this epic adventure. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.